okay now for this example we are maintaining two queues one is gant chart another one is ready queue okay gant chart for cp allocation ready queue for the process entering into the ready queue so that it can be taken by the cp okay so initially at the time zero only one process is available in the ready queue so that will enter into the cpu p1 will enter into the cpu once p1 enters the cpu it will be executed for minimum 2 seconds because time slice is 2 seconds okay after 2 seconds cpu will go and check the ready queue now after 2 seconds p2 is also entering in the ready queue so p2 will enter into the ready queue after 2 seconds okay now what the operating system will do is ask the process p2 to enter into the cpu and place p1 in the end of the queue okay p1 is already allocated and p1 will be placed at the end of the queue at the second second okay now p2 and the p1 are in waiting queue and the p2 is entering into the cpu p2 will execute for 4 seconds okay after 4 seconds the process cpu will go and check the ready queue now at the third second p3 already entered into the ready queue okay according to this at third second p3 is also available in the cpu so p3 is already available in the cpu p2 will be placed at the end of the queue and p1 will again enter into the queue p1 will execute for another 2 seconds okay so already p1 in the cpu for 2 seconds so left over is 3 p2 is already executing so left over is 6 now p1 is again entering so left over is 2 then p1 will be placed at the end of the queue now p3 will enter into the cpu will be executing for 2 seconds okay so left over is 1 okay now p3 will be placed at the end of the queue now p2 will enter into the cpu p2 will be executing for 2 seconds okay now p2 will be placed at the end of the now p1 will enter it requires only 1 second so p1 11 so no more working for p1 then p3 again 1 second p3 so holding for 1 second so p3 will complete this job then left over is only p2 p2 will be allotted for remaining 4 seconds because no other jobs are available in the ready queue so it will be taken by the uh, cpu okay full time will be taken by the cpu for p2 p2 will take the entire time of remaining time of cpu because no other process are in the ready queue so by 16 all process will be complete now calculating the waiting time waiting time equal to equal to completion time minus arrival time plus cpu burst time okay process p1 completion time is 11 minus arrival time is 0 plus cpu burst time is 5 so 11 minus 5 it is 6 process p2 completion time is 16 minus arrival time is 2 plus C two plus ten is eight. So two plus two ten. Sixteen minus ten is six. Waiting time for process P three. Last appearance. That is twelve minus arrival time is three plus C two plus ten is three. So it is six. Average waiting time is also six. Now how to calculate the turnaround time? Turnaround time very simple. Completion time minus arrival time. That's all. So process P1 completion time is 11 minus 0 equal to 11. Process P2 completion time is 16 minus arrival time is 2 equal to 14. And process P3 completion time is 12 minus arrival time is 3 equal to 9. So you can calculate average turnaround time for this process. Okay. So average turnaround time equal to 11. Plus 14 plus 9 divided by so you can calculate according to. Okay, now let us see concept wise the waiting time and the turnaround time. Okay, listen concept wise. Let me take P2. Okay, 
So when P2 is entering into the CPU at this position, P2 is entering into the CPU. Okay, when it is coming out, at this time it is coming out. So this time we should not calculate. Okay, these two seconds we should not calculate because it is in the CPU. Okay, so now why when again P2 is getting the CPU? So from this position to this position it is waiting in the CPU. Okay, so what does it mean? 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 equal to plus. Okay. Now again it is in the CPU, so we are not considering. Now this time we should consider. Okay, now here again it is entering into the CPU. So 12 minus 10 equal to 6. You can check the average waiting time, all three process having the waiting time as 6. Okay. For your understanding, one more example we will see P3. When P3 is entering into the CPU, at this position only P3 is entering into the CPU and here it is executing. So this we should not consider. This is the time we should consider. Okay, so 11 minus 8 that is 3 plus when P3 is entering into the CPU at 6th second when it is coming to the CPU at 3rd second so from 3rd second to 6th second it is waiting in the CPU so plus 3 equal to 6 ok 